Hi Viril, do you know why you should settle in Australia after doing MD or DNP in Anastasia? Australia sir? No, why? Then you should check out this part of the video. convinced with uh, why you should settle in Australia. What do you say? Yes sir. How do I get to Australia? See, I am not the right person to tell you how to actually go to Australia, the pathway and all that. So that's why uh, Dr. Chintan, who is a cosmetic surgeon who settled in Australia is going to come and he is going to tell us the pathway to settle in Australia, how to register an Australian board and how to get the visa and also he is going to talk about the salaries of doctors in Australia and several other things will be discussed. Do you want anything else? So what about work-life balance? Yeah, even uh, yeah, we have discussed even the work-life balance aspect also in this particular video and uh, how many days you need to work there. So several areas we have touched in this video. Hello Dr. Chintan, welcome to my uh, uh, YouTube channel. And uh, Hello, uh, Nidesh, audience, nice you, yeah, thank you very much for coming and uh, taking out your time for us. Actually, many people uh, in my audience were requesting about a, a video on the pathway to Australia and after uh, post-graduation in India. And also, uh, they would like to know, you know, what are the uh, conditions of work there? And uh, also, yeah. some little bit about, uh, you know, the lifestyle and, uh, you know, so these things I would like to ask you, if you're okay. Absolutely. And uh, first, we would like to start with your story. So, so just tell us about your story of uh, why you actually, you know, chose to settle in Australia and uh, how actually it started. Well, it, it was an exciting prospect to come to Australia. I, I wanted to come here right after my MBBS, but then I came here after my specialization and general surgery in India. My wife's from Australia, so it was sort of easy to get the visa as well. So I came here through, through my wife's uh, partner visa. And um, yeah, I tried through specialist pathway first for my general surgery and not sure if you're aware and maybe your audience would not be aware, but there are three categories. They judge you in. One is not comparable. Two is partially comparable. And all, the last one is completely comparable, which is rarely something that happens. Like Unless you're 30 years experience with 100 publications, maybe then you get. And, and also you need to be from one of the five countries that's South Africa, England, New Zealand, Ireland or America, something like that. But usually you aim for a partially comparable when you come here. And even then, there are many hurdles and each college has its own specifications. I feel like if we talk about that, I probably need a whole week to talk about it. Like each college has its own various criteria. But yeah, so partially comparable was not possible. I got not comparable, so I had to start my journey with the standard pathway. So what you do is give the AMC part one, which is the MCQ exam. And uh, then you go ahead and give the AMC part two, which is the clinical exam. It's um, an interesting way, yeah. So, now can we finish this AMC part one and two while do doing your post graduation? You can definitely finish part one because you can give that in India, but part two is only in Australia. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, so part one, I, I would suggest if anyone is planning on coming to Australia, either post MBBS or uh, or post post graduation if you want to give part one do it while you're doing a pg or in your internship just get rid of it get finished it off because the application itself first you have to create an amc portfolio and they go through a various amount of checks including police checks your registration check oh actually no you can't do it during internship i just remembered you need your registration number your kmc or whichever state you're from you need the registration number and uh, so you get your so those checks take about four to six months, I would say. And then they say, okay, fine, you can give the exam. So uh, surely you can do during the post-graduation because you'll have the KMC registration. Oh, 100%, yes, yes. So if somebody really wants to go to Australia, it's better to finish off the AMC part one during the MD time or MS time. And then- Yes, MD or MS, whichever you do, just finish off the part one. Okay, then uh, part two, we have to do it in Australia only. Yeah. 
So what will that exam and be like? It's a viva ex type exam, right? It's a clinical exam. So yeah. the idea behind it is how safe a doctor you would be once you come out. So are you comparable to an intern who's an Aussie graduate? That's basically what they're going for in the part two. So it's about 14 stations. And to pass, you would have to clear 10 of the 14 stations. So nine and below is a fail and 10 and above is a pass. Now, the exams are basically looking at how you take a case history, you, how quickly you examine, you look at how, what kind of investigations you order and also coming to a provisional diagnosis. Sometimes they just give you a brief history and give you an X-ray or an ECG and then boom, you, you'll be asked a few questions. And there are some stations where the exam is just sitting with his iPad and just be ticking things about what you said. So it's, it's a bit of a intimidating exam because you get two minutes to read your question outside and eight minutes to do the station. Okay. So. I understood. Yeah. So working in India, actually, we get to see a lot of patients. The volume is more in Indian postgraduation. Yes. So will that help in AMC2 exam? The, that's the thing that everybody misunderstands. So the amount of patients here too, it's, quite a lot because the number of hospital as such are quite few. So people usually don't go to private hospitals here because there's Medicare. Public healthcare is free and public healthcare infrastructure is actually sometimes better than a private healthcare. So the more complex cases are actually done in public, not in private, because the infrastructure and uh, the amount of doctors available and the specialties available is more in a public hospital and they're tertiary hospitals. Uh, so when it comes to patient load, yes, people here are also busy, equally busy if not. And second of all, it, also you have to understand the culture difference. Uh, the, the way you talk to patients, the professionals, and so they judge you on many other things. So unless you come here and do some training, there are some courses that you that uh, are run to help people pass the AMC part two to understand um, that they're done only here. So you'll have to be here for that. And, uh, or if you're lucky enough, like me, I finished my part one and I got a job here, which is, very unusual uh so i got my job here after part one so i could work in the system here uh basically one one year above an intern so they call it a resident here and uh because i worked in emergency department and medicine surgery icu so i did all of that so i could understand how the system works and when i went my, for my exams the part two i didn't even have to study for it like you know you finished internship you've done gen said i know enough clinical knowledge and once i worked here i didn't have to go for the course so it really helped me. But if you're not lucky enough to get the job after part one, so it's pretty much mandatory to do that uh, because you are coming from a completely different culture and idea. And even when it's something as simple as one station would be about someone's daughter calling you, asking about what's happening to her father. And if you give out the information, that's a fail because of pressure and privacy breach. So you'll have to go ask the father, is it okay if I talk to your daughter about a condition? So do you understand? Like, it's, it's huge, right? It's a big difference. <laughs> it's kind of unheard of if you go to think about it. Yeah, Yeah, got it. So I think uh, during the PG time, we have to train ourselves, uh, you know, like how to answer this kind of... Some YouTube videos and all must be there. I think... Uh, I think... I'm think. i sure there are, yeah. Like, come on, YouTube has everything now, yeah. <laughs> So maybe if they get themselves trained, and then it would be easy, I think. Otherwise, it will be tougher to totally reorient. But this, the, biggest, the biggest hurdle for any doctor coming to Australia is not the exams. Okay. It's the visa. Oh. So you can't get a job, or not can't is a very harsh word. I would say it's almost close to impossible to get a job if you don't have a permanent residency or a temporary residency. Visa is the main thing. That's what you're telling. Visa is the biggest hurdle. So if you come here on a worker's visa, when a hospital employs you as a on a working visa, they have to give money to the government as a bond. Oh. They don't want to do that if there are enough local graduates available. You know what I mean? I so Australia has a huge market for overseas students who come here to do MBBS. Okay from Nigeria, China, Kenya, in, even India, or you know, Sri Lankans, there are a lot of people who come here to do MBBS itself. Yeah. Quite an expensive affair. I'm not sure why they do it. Because um, once they finish MBBS, they don't get a visa. They are on a work visa. 
And there are people who don't get an internship position here and they have to fly back to their country. Oh, I understand. It's like uh, they have to go back. No other option is there for them. Because positions would be filled up. So one of the main differences compared to Indian education system and here is when we do our MBBS, we are guaranteed an internship in that hospital, right? Here, you could have studied in any medical college all over Australia, any state, you don't get a, you're not guaranteed an internship position there. Oh. You'll have to apply everywhere. Got it. You have to do undergo interviews. And then depending on how well you're done in your interview, you also have to give your uh, favorite position and they match you. And then when you, if you match, you get an intensive position. And you could have done your, your med school in New South Wales or maybe in Sydney to give you a better, you know, more recognized uh, place. So you could do your med school in Sydney. You'll end up for your internship in Perth. Oh, in India, it is just guaranteed. like, uh, you know, after finishing final year, internship is just continuation of that. It's guaranteed, right? You you know yeah. exactly where you, you're going to be. Yeah. yeah. So so the competition for the for those positions is quite, uh, yeah, quite ridiculous. Now I understood the system a little bit. So which speciality mm. you think is better to do in India, which will have some demand in Australia? What is your personal experience and suggestion? When it comes to post graduation migration again visa is the number one yeah no, for them but to if sponsor... you have a workers visa and you come here you don't have to give the amc if you get through specialist pathway oh now specialist pathway i'm not sure what the any that is college has the recommendations because uh each I have gone through specialist my, mine is yeah, yeah specialist recommendations but they are telling again you have to apply in a college and comparability you have to get it even in yes. specialist pathway yes. So very similar to AMC standard path, you have to submit first, create a portfolio, submit all your documents. And when I say documents, you'll have to submit everything, including your logbook. Okay. Uh, you'll have to give uh, referee reports and um, all the publications. So Australia is a very research heavy country. If you have some uh, five publications during the post-graduation time in India, will it help in getting a position there? Yes, it does help. It does help. So your experience as to here, the training program is five years for everyone, for all specialties. Okay. And in India is three years. So because of that itself, there is a bit of a comparability problem. So ideally, if you want to migrate after specialization, you should work at least two to three years in India. Okay. Two and even while you're working as a consultant, you need to have a logbook as well. Okay, got it. Logbook so not just your there. training years. Three for publication. Not just be there. Any, yes. Even when you're a consultant, you need to have log of all your cases because when you apply, they'll ask you for your last most recent two year logbook. Got it. So after post graduation, two, three years of working with a good logbook and four five publications, you'll, ha you'll have better chances. If you have 10, I think it's the best. 10, Ten publications. It could be even case reports. You don't have to do RDT, honestly. Yeah, case reports, case correspondence, reports. letter to and, and just before you apply, just before the year you apply, go for a couple of conferences. Some, each conference put up about three or four posters. That itself is like what? You can say it's eight, yeah. <laughs> eight presentations. Yeah. Got it. So you could have presentation. You, you, in your CV, you would have a section for your presentations and then for publications. So put up like five or six posters, three or four case reports, and, and I don't know, maybe a retrospective article, but get get that heavy research, heavy CV ready. Uh, and that that's the biggest uh, plus. I understood. Actually, UK because... prefers more of audit based, uh, like, like audits are uh, preferred more if you're planning to go to UK. Australia is more of research. And, uh, yes, it's it's pretty research heavy here, and and it's gotten to a point where if you want to get onto a training program here after med school, after MBBS, uh, students usually end up doing a master's, like a postgraduate degree in master's in medicine, master's in surgery, or master's in whatever public health. Because when you're doing master's, you have to not do it with just with coursework, which is just one year. You have to do it with research, which is two years. So and it's a, a proper research in the sense it'll be either an RCT or a systematic review of some sort. So mm -hmm. that gives a lot of points. And meanwhile, in those two years, they'll also publish a few case reports and posters and go for conferences. So they build up their CV in those two years. And to get onto any surgical field, you at least need a PhD now. Got it, got it. So, so surgeon point, yeah. also do PhD, I think, along with that. Just... 
So you start, you do your PhD first, and then you do your training. Oh, got it, got it. So it's pretty difficult because then. to get onto the training program. So like here, it's we call uh, registrar. The, what a PG is uh, in India, it's, it's a registrar here, and to be a registrar, an accredited registrar with the college, you, you should ideally have a PhD now. Okay, okay, got it. Now I'm understanding the culture. If not a PhD, at least twenty publications. Got it, got it. I think for me, Australia is a better place. I feel after talking to you, <laughs> I have done some twenty four <laughs> publications, so I think I should apply yeah. there. <laughs> so that 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 has a lot of weight. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So the so till so which specialty you didn't tell me? Like for example, if the if the country has to sponsor somebody, it should be some rare specialty or at least some supply demand the mismatch should be there. Mm, to be honest, there is a supply demand mismatch everywhere. Especially, mm. for example, like psychiatry, mm. there's a heavy supply, I mean, uh, demand. need for psychiatrists. Oh. Huge demand. Uh, one of the reasons being, it's a very easy program to get onto, sort of, compared to others. You don't need a PhD or something, but passing out, it's probably like a 20-25% pass rate. The mm. exams are the toughest. They have the toughest exam, they have, they have, they have a very uh, stringent uh, training program as well. So not many psychiatrists here. So if you want to see a psychiatrist in private here, public forget, it'll be like maybe two year wait period. In private <laughs> itself, it's anywhere between six months to one year. So even <laughs> if you're ready to shell out money, you'd probably not find an appointment. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That is why I'm seeing a lot of uh, psychiatrists, my friends from Nimans are uh, moving to Australia. That is the reason. And and you know why Nimhans has a good reputation? Because they're again a research heavy institution. Yeah, research heavy. So, that so is... you, I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, my friend Roshan, he would know, uh, Nagesh yeah. Pai, he's, he did it from okay. the and he's, he's here. And he got full recognition, full comparability when he applied for specialist pathway. Mm -hmm. He came ages ago and he was already like 20 years into practice anyway, he probably had like 50 publications. So, he got full comparability. So, there are fields, like you said, yes, there's some fields there is huge demand. Uh, but if you look at Gen Med, anesthesia. Gen Med are, my, most of again, my subscribers are anesthesia, anesthesia people. Diamond doesn't anesthetist, lots of anesthetists. Okay. But if you come here, you would get a job very easily in outskirts or regional areas of Australia. Yeah, correct. So for regional areas. So getting into the city would be very okay. hard, but getting into a yeah. regional area, you would. Yeah. One more important question is there: Can uh, uh, this to become a consultant there? Is it possible for Indians with an Indian degree and this one, or should we restudy again the five-year program? No. So if you get partial comparable, so you'll have to work here for two years as a registrar. Okay. So that means like a PG. So, but you'll be like a senior registrar, and you'll have to at the end of two years you'll have to give their fellowship exams. So okay. fellow of Royal Australian College of Anesthetics, so FRNC, or so you yeah, have to give the exam. You pass that, and you're a consultant. So unlike yeah. India, where there is like, oh, you start as assistant professor. No, before that, now what's that? Something else. There is another SR, senior residence, and then you become assistant, then associate, and there's not none of that here. The professor title is only for people who work in universities, like teachers, mm -hmm. who works in the hospital. You're a consultant. That's it. Everyone's at the same level. So you and another consultant who's worked for 20 years, you're both at the same level. Got it. So so two years we have to work after finishing AMC 1 and 2. And then partial comparability, if we get, then we can start as a, after finishing the fellowship in Fansgar, we can get into the thing. Yes. So this you will become a consultant. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Got it, got it. But in the peripheral places, more chances are there. Yes, yes. And because... I've seen a lot of any that is friends here who finish anesthetics in India and they come here and they either go into crit care. So there is crit care here as a separate field. Yeah. So ICU is run by just completely different. So they have a separate college, but any that is, you know, the training program is almost similar. So they can get into that as well. So that's another another avenue to explore for any that is from India. Yes. Okay. Crit Even care. for that, they have to do this same process here. Got it. And the third avenue is emergency department. So you can become a, you know, you can apply for emergency training program no. and get onto that. You'll be eligible for emergency. emergency medicine, right? Anesthetist. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So coming to uh, uh, last uh, few questions, 
So salary, I've done some research. They're showing some 300,000 uh, Australian dollars to 500,000 Australian dollars in the websites. Some job opportunities as such. Is that true or what is the... That is... That's that's the least. That's that's minimum, yeah. That's the minimum. Or, uh, if you, yeah, you, can, you can make more than that, but that's the minimum actually, yeah. But that's only in private. So that's only in private. if you want to work hard, you work five to six days a week, yeah, you can easily make up to 700. And uh, if, you, if you join a public hospital... And there are two titles for consultancy. One is a staff specialist. Okay. So you work in the public hospital. Your pay would range anywhere from 180 or 180,000 to 250. Okay. Uh, and if you are if you get a job as a VM or a visiting medical officer, so that's the big money job. So you can just you pay it every day, but you don't get sick leaves, you don't get annual leaves. The staff specialist gets all of that. This is just purely very transactional. And you can, yeah, that that would be somewhere around three, 300 to 500, absolutely. So that's a, uh, if you, you know, really convert it in, in rupees, it will be a very big amount, actually. <laughs> Look, honestly, there are no poor doctors in Australia. <laughs> you, you work hard here and you pay well. Poor doctors in India, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, it's very uh, simple. Like you, you, you deserve the pay you get, like. You you made you're made to work hard. There's not there's no easy job. Every job is busy because, like I said, there are not many people. Maybe if you compare to India, but there are not many hospitals here either. So healthcare is quite uh, yeah. Yeah. So lifestyle, if we see how many days you need to work in a week. Uh, as a uh, it depends. You can work maybe like four to five days. You can you can okay. take the weekends off. Okay. But if but if you're an anaesthetist, it's hard not to work weekends because sometimes you'll be on call for yeah. emergencies. So, so that will whenever be there is a case, you'll be called back. Yeah. Yeah, that will be there. It's not rough. And it's not every weekend. It'll be like a weekend every month or something. Got it. Got it. Like uh, Australia is known for the tourism and uh, scenic beauty. So you'd be getting some. So it's more like a vacation no? uh, in the free times. What do you, What is your uh, say on Look, the days you're off, it's just fun. Like today, I had the day off. Tomorrow, I got the day off. So yeah, I'm just out with the kids. We, we live right next to the opera house, so it's easy. So just go down, have lunch outside. So even if you earn money, you end up spending a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> so that part of the life is lifestyle. Yeah, lifestyle that way is quite extra. So the rent's quite high here. The, okay. the service charge, you know, food. What will be the rent better. on an average? Two BHK or three BHK? What depends, like. If you if you get an apartment in Sydney, uh, like the city area, it yeah. could range from anywhere between seven hundred to nine hundred a week. I'm saying for a three bedroom, seven hundred so per week. Per week, so yeah. per month, if we see four thousand dollars roughly. Yeah, roughly, yeah, we're anywhere between three and a half to four thousand per per month. And look, schooling is free here, public school. So oh, and schooling good. is free. Healthcare otherwise free because you know you, you well, pay about right. depending American on culture right is about, yeah you pay about uh, what anywhere between thirty five to forty five percent tax depending on which you know how much your earnings are so but you know there are benefits too so lifestyle wise it's a very nice once you come here you get used to it to be honest I had a friend of mine in, in Newcastle who came here as a transplant surgeon oh there is a third part I forgot to mention that. It's the third way you can come here for training, mm -hmm. but you have to go back. So oh. it's a two-year fellowship. And that visa is very easy to get. Hospitals love that position to give away because they get a senior, <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, a senior competent person to come work for them. They yeah. pay you well. They pay you as a fellow. So the good pay is good. Uh, but it's just a two-year visa. You get a like a certificate saying you did a fellowship uh, in whatever yeah. field you come in here, peat surge, cardiothoracics, whatever it is, come here and do that for two years, and but then you have to go back. They can't. Yes, I checked even that option also. I checked. It is uh, some limited uh, period. Uh, something is there. Fourth yeah. option also is there. Yeah. So better to go in a standard path. You went through standard pathway, but specialist pathway also we have to I try. Tried specialist pathway, which didn't work out. Then I had to yeah. try the standard pathway. Standard. standard is more tougher. That's what they have written in the website. Stand is tough in the sense if you finish your post graduation there and then you come here, you are competing with freshly graduated interns yeah. who are basically trained from like year three onwards to do research. 
Got it, got it. So, and when you start off on a standard pathway, whatever experience you had before, like your degrees, etc., etc., so whatever you did, it carries no weight. So when you make your CV, whatever you put, your that carries no weight. So if you want to come to standard pathway, finish your internship, just get on the board here, yeah, get on board, just come here. So, so the so, sooner you come here, the better. So superb uh, interview actually. I came to know the process and the salaries and the lifestyle and uh, who are uh, what is actually. So if somebody sees this interview, they will get an overview of actually it is possible or not. At least yes, it is a it is possible after MD and there is a. Way. And do you have the links for uh, where to look up for the AMC? Uh, links I, I didn't get, but uh, how to register in American? Board? I can send it to you, and if you can just, you know, you can just put it, yeah, put it in the description. Yeah. So, little bit to finish about your cosmetic surgery, like uh, compared to India and Australia. So, what is the difference you feel like uh, in a practice? Oh, I haven't, I haven't done any of that back home, so uh, I'm really quite clueless about it. I, I do mainly uh, anti wrinkles, I do fillers, okay. and I do. Um, PDO thread lifts, so non-surgical fa facelifts. Okay. So those are the main ones. And I also do PRP for hair. Oh, got it, got it. So I'm sticking to that for now. And um, also I've recently started, I'm starting my, like I just mentioned, we have our own medical practice now. We've also got dental chairs, so I've got dentists working for me. Um, and also starting our uh, authorized medical cannabis clinics. So plenty on the plate, lots of going on. And I'm training in GP. <laughs> So, so that's the well, niche in cosmetic area again. Got it. So thank you, Dr. Chintan, for uh, coming into the channel and giving uh, valuable insights. Oh, it was a pleasure, man. Pleasure. So hope uh, you no, know, we'll do one more interview in future sometime later. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, if if people have more questions, like this was quite an impromptu thing we did. So yeah, know, if you have people have more questions and we can do a Q&A session one session. more we can do a bit more detailed one if required yeah yeah one Q&A session maybe after three four months I'll, I'll gather all the questions that people ask and then we can have a Q&A session and that finishes the uh, schedule actually yeah 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 sure and meanwhile I'll send you the links for AMC yeah. and if